This video is the second part of the Yarns Conversations with Cruisers interview with Dennis and Barbara of SV Landfall. Dennis walks us around his beautiful Shannon 37 sailboat, SV Landfall, and shows us the ins and outs. Make sure you check out the podcast interview if you haven't yet already. Okay, so Shannon, is what's the model on it's this? It's a 37, it's called. Uh, thir and, but does it have a name other than Shannon? Is nope. it just a Shannon 37? Shannon 37. And I was noticing your twin head stays. Is that, was that standard? Yep. And well, then, on this one, Shannons are a semi-custom. Okay, cool. So that's what they did on this one. Uh-huh. And then what are the sales per side? So like this is like a 160. Oh, wow. And then this is like a Yankee. Uh-huh. So we use this in conjunction with the stay sail. Mm-hmm. So That's, high cut, yank, yeah. yep. Mm-hmm. Can take a wave or whatever. And then what's the weight on that 160? Is it like a Jinniker or is it or is it cruising no, weight? No, it's, it's like a pretty heavy fabric. It's wow, not that is fabric. interesting. That is so a we, lot of sail. <laughs> yeah, we have to be pretty careful. Uh-huh. If you have it out, especially if you have it pulled out. Oh, wow. It yeah. can get... It'll get away from you real quick. Yeah. yeah. If it builds up... That you is, know, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. uh, that is cool. So. And then your staysail yep. is what obviously, oh, it's like probably, you know, I don't know how the percentage of a staysail. I don't know how the staysail. How it's percentaged, right? But, but it yeah. basically goes almost to the mast. And self-tacking with self your. Self-tacking. Those features are really nice because it's all fed, everything's fed to the cockpit. Mm -hmm. So we can totally run the staysail. We mm -hmm. can reef it we can uh, furl it uh, the car we can you know do the outhaul and the uh, sheet mm -hmm. and it topping lift everything from the cockpit that's amazing so, so that, that's really nice for shorthanded sailing yeah so like what's your nighttime sail configuration in the trades let's just talk about regular steady trades like what what is your sail what sails do you run at night at night, we would probably run like the Yankee, mm -hmm. and then we can roll the stay sail in and out as necessary. Right. We try to never roll our jibs in part way. Yeah. Because it's so hard on the sail. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it definitely it, stretches them out. It stretches them really funny. Mm -hmm. So we we just like, you know, if it's too much for the Yankee, then we just go with the stay sail. That's cool. You have the built-in options, which yep. is fascinating. You have yep. three head soles to choose from, which is yep. crazy. Yep, it really it, helps a lot. Mm -hmm. How yeah. often do you use that 160? Not that often. Yeah, I wouldn't think I would yeah. use it very often. My boat likes 100%. Yep. <laughs> Loves 100%. I think if I was going to get a new one, I would mm -hmm. probably do maybe a 150. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, 140 maybe even. But uh, in the right situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then most of the time in that situation, we can run our spinnaker. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, exactly. So. And then what about your your main sole? Do you, how do you, do you keep it reefed down when you're ocean sailing? A lot. Me too. Um, I find that in my experience, most boats have too much main. Yep. And most of the time we are got our first reef in, mm -hmm. or second, actually it's our second reef because we have single line reefing. Mm -hmm. And... That works good because then we don't have to leave the cockpit to reef the main. Yep. And uh, so it's basically as much as I can, I've read it, run everything back. Mine is almost always in the second reef. Yeah. Almost always. Like yeah. most of my power is in my head sole. Yep. I adjust that as yep. needed. Yep. And you try and balance it. The boat becomes overpowered with the main too much. Mm -hmm. It uh, It's really hard to balance if I have too much main on it. Yeah. I have electric windlass. Yep. You definitely want it with that heavy of a anchor. I wouldn't want to haul up. Yep. <laughs> and we used to have five sixteenths chain, uh -huh. mm -hmm. which I liked better. Yeah, that's what I have. But mm -hmm. it's so much. We changed it in New Zealand here because of weight. Uh huh. Our bow is, you know, when we have our eighty-five pound CQR hanging out there, mm -hmm. and then we, it's too much weight in the bow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we do passages, I take the anchor off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that when you guys came in. So what's your chain right now? This is quarter now. Quarter. Cool. Yep. Yeah, I have so, 5 sixteenths HT and it works yeah, really well for me. That's what I had before. Yeah, I like it. And I would probably go back to that again because mm -hmm. I think it's it's just more weight on the bottom. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, love it. Yeah. And then you got your jerry cans here. Yep. 
That's good. How much, what's your fuel capacity overall? Um, I think we have 70 gallons mm -hmm. in the tank. So it's not a very big tank. Mm -hmm. And the only, when we did chili, we had 16 cans on deck. Oh, wow. That and makes sense. You have to though, right? Because yeah, of the, there's no you know, fuel available. Yeah. So, so that, you know. You gotta, you gotta be self-sufficient there. Yeah. I mean. So, and then moving aft. How, how dry do your hatches stay when you're in the ocean sailing? These here? Yeah. If we dog them down good, mm -hmm. they stay pretty good. That's amazing. Yeah. Outstanding. But they, uh, they... And then good ventilation. Yep. With your door aid boxes everywhere. Yep. The door aid boxes are, for ocean going, mm -hmm. really nice. Because yeah. you got fresh air all the time in the boat. We never get water. I've never had any water come in the door. I need to. I, I'm. I plan on installing one. I have like one I can screw on that's not a box though, so I can't run it at yeah. sea. And it's like you know when it's a wet passage yep. and everything's closed up, there's just moisture everywhere. Yep. Yep. And there. I mean, there's. It's just wet all the time. Yep. So, mm -hmm. um, the door aids are really nice. I mean, we've never had any water come in them at all. That is fantastic. So helps with mold that's for sure yep. and you got your bug screens which is really good for no cms yep. and our ports all open so we can we get really good ventilation mm -hmm. so that's awesome and then you got your life raft that's like the best spot for a life yeah. raft It'd be nice if you could have it you some people mount it on the on the stern yeah would be really nice yeah but, you gotta get hard rails over on that whole back section yeah there. But you run out of room so yeah no doubt and th this you said this boat's 38 37 37 okay yeah, yeah. No. and then did, did was the dodger on here when you no i built the dodger beautiful fantastic so. and then did is it cord yeah yeah it's two two layers of eighth inch marine plywood mm -hmm. and then glassed after that yeah a lot a lot of glass <laughs> yeah yeah i built my dodger and it was four months of itching i always say yeah it was uh but the greatest thing you could do for a yeah. boat yeah i mean it's nice and solid and yeah. it's something good to grab a hold of it doesn't mm -hmm. yeah it feels secure yeah and then you have pretty minimal uh solar right yeah, but um i like loads. i like how loose those are and how like yeah they're um not quite rigid so they're easier to stow yep and, we, we uh, never travel we never sail with them up. Mm -hmm. and then you have your wind vane oh and you have a wet and sea on the yep. stern as well yeah. and that supplies all your power needs like on an ocean crossing between yeah. that and the wind yeah we never run on the, the solar's never out in the passages uh -huh. so this is basically just that anchor wow that's cool that's so. awesome <clears throat> and he was like you got a full cockpit <laughs> full cockpit here yeah, we're just say, uh, say hello everyone hey. <laughs> all right i think can we head down below barbara sure. okay trying trying to not get in trouble here just remember that there's four people there. there there's yeah they just there's four people just, that just made passage from australia so <laughs> anyone with a boat will be like that boat's in, in amazing shape so. <laughs> Oh, I love the layout too. It's nice. Like, look at that big salon area. It's fantastic. Um, in a good galley shape. You can really brace yourself in. Yep. So, like, there's, like, at sea, there's all this room to, like, not go too far. Yeah. <laughs> Which is important. That's the problem with when people are going to the bigger boats, I think, is this space right here. Mm-hmm. You end up with a bunk out four more feet yep and all of a sudden you have no way to get from here yep to there one thousand percent and I'm... you just go flying mm -hmm. and it's two the handrails you know you need this is we use this all the time all you the... swing around on this sometimes yep. because the seas are and even this good area yep. where you can brace your hips you know yep. you don't go far well, i've been i've been on big defores in the ocean on deliveries where i had we had to crawl yeah to spots because it was so dangerous yeah yeah well, and like if you're putting your rain suit on, this is the spot uh -huh. because you're not going to fall. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you can just sort of lean up against this or you can fall yep. up against that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And um, then you have what you have cold plate refrigeration or um, we have keel coil. Oh, cool. Okay. So, okay. So that's 
It's about as efficient as I could get it. Mm -hmm. So we have a freezer and a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. A little tiny fridge. And then you said you built your own lithium battery pack, right? Was a recent upgrade? Is yep. That, mm -hmm. yep. Which is fantastic upgrade. Yep. Yeah, that <laughs> There's... really helps a lot. It gives yeah. you... I mean, we have to produce the same amount, but mm -hmm. it gives you more time to, to get around. You actually get to use what you're producing. That's yep. the difference. Yeah. Yep. So. And then how many cabins are on this? Well, it's just you have this, mm -hmm. and then the V berth, and then the heads here. And then where's where's y'all? Where do you you and Barbara sleep? You well, know? like we've got our daughter and her partner, and so they sleep in the V berth, mm -hmm. and Barbara and I these slide out. Oh, okay, cool. So mm -hmm. yeah, sleep. and then underway, obviously, you make a passage berth somewhere. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's what I do. Lee as claws well. go on here mm -hmm. and make the to... nest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and we had you know four people, so. You had two people were sleeping all the time, or mm -hmm. at least laying in them. Yeah. So. Yeah, it gets boat gets very small with four people on board for yeah. sure. Awesome. And then, oh, there's your phone. And then, yeah. do you guys ever use the pilot berth or? No, that's just storage. Yeah. Here, Barb. I like the nets. The nets are. Ah, uh, the screens are so cool. Very necessary. Awesome. Cool. Thanks so much for the tour of your beautiful, beautiful boat and uh, telling us your stories. Oh, no problem. And um, that's it. That's that's this episode of Conversation with Cruisers. And uh, thanks again. Yep. We'll see you. For their passage across the Tasman, Dennis and Barbara were joined by Barbara's daughter, Allison, and her partner, James, who also have a YouTube channel. They made an incredibly beautiful film of the passage, so head over and check it out on their channel, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of their adventures. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.